Okay, uh, this is going to be a quick rundown of a couple different access points uh, created by Ruckus. Um, right now, I'm using the R500. Uh, I had been considering the H500, which is a slightly different form factor, not meant to be ceiling mounted, but rather put over a wall plate. It also has some um, switch ports. It also apparently can't run the unleashed controller in master mode, which is good to know. So you can't have a network entirely of just H510s. It's also considering the R510, which is a replacement to the R500. Uh, the big difference is that it's AC wave two and is no longer end of life the way the R500 is. And then I was also considering the R610, which is kind of a, a step up uh, in price and capabilities. These, the, the big difference is that it has a 3x3 three three, uh, radio set as opposed to uh, the 2x2s two that the rest of them have. So I was having some trouble deciding and comparing all the different factors, so I put this together to get a better idea of the differences between all of them. So the first requirement was physical. Uh, I was using the R500 and wanted to make sure the height was relatively the same. Um, these are a 6.2 inch square that is about 1.6 inches tall. So the R510 is a slightly larger, uh, a quarter of an inch in, in the X and Y, and then another, well, it's about the same depth. It's a slightly different form factor where it's kind of rounded, but it's, it's not a problem for me. And then the R610 is actually significantly bigger, an inch uh, in each direction, or even an inch and a half in each direction. Uh, so almost eight inches square with two inches of depth or height. So that's uh, something that I had to watch out for. Here's a quick visual demonstration of the differences in size. So we have the R500 here, the R510 here, and the R610 here. We can see that the R610 is substantially larger than the R500 and R510, uh, both in width and in height. And then in terms of depth, uh, it's hard to say for sure because this is slightly more rounded, the newer style, compared to the older square style. But when you look at it from a profile view, the R610 clearly sits higher than the R510. And the R510 sits just a little bit higher than the R500. They all have the same They all have the same PoE jack, secondary ethernet, 12 volt DC power, and reset button. The newer ones have a cable channel so that the mounting holes for uh, just a one gang electrical box, you can run the ethernet flat through it, whereas the, the R500, the original version, did not have that feature. Here's another look at the three of them. Another thing was that the R610 runs on PoE plus 802.3 AT, the 30 watt standard, as opposed to the typical class three 802.3 AF, uh, normal PoE standard that the rest of them run on. So, if you run it, you, it actually can run in AF mode and normal PoE mode. It has some reduced functionality in that case. I think the 2.4 radio goes from 3x3 to 2x3, uh, but it's, it's not significantly different. So, yeah, uh, the R500 is the smallest of the three normal ones. The H510 is the smallest of them all, but it, for, for reasons we'll see later, I'm not considering it. Uh, maximum power-wise, 
when using 802.3AF, they're all relatively similar. R500 is a little bit less at 10.5 watts, and then the R510 and 610 are 12.6, 12.7 watts, and then the R610 in AT PoE Plus mode can pull up to 22 watts of power, so that's good to know. Uh, in terms of the Unleashed version, since the R500 is end of life, it is no longer receiving updates, and 200.7, which was released in May 2021, is the latest Unleashed version uh, that, that it can run. And if I'm not mistaken, the rest of the access points in the same Unleashed network need to run the same version. So even if the 510 and 610 supported 200.11, it wouldn't be able to run it if it wanted to talk to the R500. So it's good to know. And then, yeah, since the rest of them are, are still supported, they run the latest uh, November 2021 release of Unleashed software, which is 200.11. So in this case, the R500 is discontinued and the R510 and 610 are the same. Uh, beam flex pattern. So this is the way that Ruckus kind of does beam forming and directing the radio signals specifically at a device. Uh, the R500, well, actually R500, R510, and I suspect the H510. Since they all have two by two radios, they all support 64 different patterns. And the R610, since it has a 3x3 radio, supports 512 patterns. So that's why I suspect it has so many more. Um, the big, again, the big difference is that the R510, 610, and, and H510 all support Wave 2 multi user MIMO instead of single user MIMO, which in theory supports more concurrent users and more concurrent users all using bandwidth at the same time. So a bunch of traffic could still be passed, uh, whereas the R500 might struggle a little bit with a lot of clients. 2.4 radios, uh, the, the 500 series is two by two and the 600 series is three by three. That's same, the identical for both 2.4 and five gigahertz. And the peak rate for five gigahertz is dependent on the number of radio chains or, or the, the type of, of MIMO. So, that, uh, or the number of spatial streams, I think. Uh, so the three by three streams get you 1300 megabits where two by two gets you 870 megabits. Um, antenna gain, I interpret this to be the sensitivity of the antenna uh, or, or I guess the effectiveness of the antenna. The H510 is in a limited form factor strapped to a wall, so it only has one decibel of, of gain. Meanwhile, the R500 is apparently better than the 510, 610. Uh, but the 510 and 610 are identical in this regard. And since those are the two that I'm debating between, that's, it's a moot point. Um, in terms of the transmit power, again, limited form factor. The R500 is a little bit weaker and then 26, 27 decibels for 2.4 gigahertz. That's basically the same. Uh, same thing for five gigahertz, 25 decibels. So that's, they're, they're trading blows in terms of transmit power. Uh, in terms of power targets, there are different power targets for different configured, well, one for 2.4 versus 5 gigahertz, the other for different MCS indices, and the third for different uh, channel widths. So we can see that, let's see, 2.4 gigahertz, uh, we've got almost the weakest on the H510. The R500 is really weak in 5 or 2.4 gigahertz MCS7 for some reason. And then uh, the R510 and 610 are almost identical. The power targets for five gigahertz, VHT20. Um, we have the 610 performing a little bit worse than the 510. Uh, and then the 500 and 510 performing almost identically. Uh, meanwhile, the, the H510 is doing really well here. Next, we can move to the VHT 40 and 80, so the 40 and 80 megahertz uh, channel widths, and we see that the 510 and 610 are identical here and are almost identical to the 500, and then the 510 is also doing okay here. So all things considered in this section, we see the R510 is probably the best all around, the R610 is, is also really good, um, and then the 500 and H510 are falling a little bit behind. Now we can look at receive sensitivity. So this, I interpret this as the, the sensitivity of the antennas to very weak signals. Um, I think the minimums are just kind of general values. And then we look again at a breakdown between the different uh, frequencies, the different MCS indices and the different channel widths. 
So in terms of just overall minimum sensitivity, we see that H510 is the least sensitive. It can only pick up 99 decibel signals. Um, R500 is the second best and is the same as the 610 with just a, a flat 100 decibels. And then the 510 seems to be more sensitive to 2.4 gigahertz and a little bit less sensitive than the others to 5 gigahertz. Uh, yeah, I don't know how much this will make a difference, but we can look more at the individual sensitivities now. Uh, so for 2.4 gigahertz, we see that the H510 really excels here uh, based on the coloring. The, the H510 excels, the R510 comes in second, and then the R610 and R500 kind of trade blows in terms of sensitivity. Uh, yeah, it's not, I mean, it's not a huge difference, 77 to 74, 92, 91, 74 to 71, but theoretically the 510 would be kind of second place and the, the H510 would be first place. I'm guessing because they're supposed to be very, very close in the rooms. Uh, next we'll look at five gigahertz. And again, we see that uh, the, the 510, the R510 does really well and is mostly trading blows with the other two. But the 610 is again, not performing quite as much in terms of, of minimum sensitivity here. It's a little bit lower than the R500 and R510. I'm guessing because it wants to support more clients as opposed to tons of clients that are further away. Uh, so throughout this, we see the, the R510 is for the most part, the most sensitive and then the R R500 is the second most, and then the R610 is the third most. And the H510 is just really not sensitive at all. Okay, looking at received sensitivities, they're all relatively similar. Again, the black line shows one particular beam flex pattern, and then the other line, the larger circle, shows the combination of all the different beam flex patterns. And since beam flex works on a packet by packet basis, the, the larger span is what we're looking at. Um, yeah, the azimuth is looking from the top down at the access point, laying flat on a table, so to speak. So 360 degrees around the access point as it's mounted on a, on a ceiling or, or on a table. And then the elevation is looking at kind of a cross section of the access point. So an access point from the side, looking at its height rather than, than the squareness. Uh, so we see from the azimuth patterns that they're all relatively identical in a, in a 360 degree pattern, which is to be expected. Uh, we wouldn't want it to have any sort of directionality. So the, the H510, the R500, the R510 and the R610 are all identical in this regard with, uh, with a, just a kind of a round equal pattern in, in every direction. As for the elevation patterns, uh, these suggest to me that the access point, it matters very greatly where the face of the access point is, is pointed and where the back is pointed. The back won't get nearly as good uh, of reception and transmit power and receive power as the front side of the access point or, or kind of the wide face with the ruckus name and or the, the LEDs. So looking at these, this suggests to me that it's very important that your devices stay in front of the access point rather than behind it. And this also shows me that all of the devices are relatively similar with regard to uh, only working in front of or, or very slightly behind. And directly behind will get you very little service. So yeah, with all of this in mind, this is making me think that the R510 is probably the way to go. You can get them for cheaper than the R610. They're more uh, compatible with PoE switches because they don't need the full 30 watts of power. And in general, it seems as if their received sensitivity is pretty good for 2.4 and for 5 gigahertz. So with all that in mind, I'll probably go forward with the R510s. Yep, thanks.